Page 29, Rain, Rain. This is the first lesson I'm giving in this book because I start my lessons where they have written music and this is the first one with written music. The other stuff, you can go through that on your own, I'm sure. If you have questions, you're welcome to ask. But I want to talk about these symbols that make up written music because it's important you know and understand what they all mean. So starting on page 27, they introduce the staff. The staff, simply put, are those five lines you see. It actually is the five lines and the spaces in between the lines, but you can't see the spaces too well, so we just say it's five lines. That's where the notes go, yeah. and that tells us which notes to play on the piano, and we'll get there. We've got to coordinate all this together. Look in the middle of page 27, you see those round, those are notes, one kind of note. We'll worry about what kind yet, just, it's a note. And first they show you how it looks when the note is on a, we say it's on a line when the line goes through it. It's on a line. And then they show you the notes in the spaces. So all together, there's like nine of them here in the staff. A little more than that, but let's just stick with this. At the bottom of the page, 27, they want you to put in an L or an S, depending on whether the note above the, the note is on a line or in a space, but you can do that. Now let's go to page 28. Page 28, they introduce you to the bass clef sign. The bass clef sign is that weird looking thing with the two dots. It's also known as an F clef. It could be called either one. And it tells you where or what the name of the note is in the staff. So you look in the middle of the page, they show a note there on a line that goes right between the two dots. That is the F. It's an F. That's why it's called an F clef. It points out where F is on the staff. And if you know where F is, you can figure out the other notes. However, we don't usually take time to figure them out. We just memorize them. It's quicker. But the point is, I, I need you to understand it's a bass clef or an F clef. Most of the time it's called bass clef, but it could be either one. Now, at the bottom of page 28, they, they're telling you, and they put in the name of the note in, in the middle of the note. I find that a little confusing because it makes the note look a little different than it should. But they're telling you the name of the note. So look at the bottom of page 28, and I do a drill. You just gotta love drills, don't you? Called Play It and Say It. It's where you play the note on the piano, and you say the name of the note. Well, we can say the name of the note in the music because it's written in the note. Because F is the first two, the first what five notes or six notes are all Fs, and then you get a note right under that is in the space. That's an E, and a note under that is a D. It goes down the alphabet. You see, in music we use the first seven letters of the alphabet, A through G. There's no H. Supposed to be. No H. For our purposes, there's no H. Now, I'm throwing a lot at you, but you can watch this more than once, and I'm going to review all this anyway. But in music, we have steps and skips. A step is when two notes are right next to each other. A skip is anything bigger than that. That's it. So, a step, you're going up or down the alphabet, and a skip, you're going up or down more than one letter in the alphabet. So the point is in look in the middle of this line where you have these four notes and they go down the staff. They go down the alphabet. F E D C. And then they go back up the alphabet. D E F. There's a few more symbols here and I need to you sort of understand those because I refer to these in the lesson. You have to understand the vocabulary or the names of these things or you're going to be lost. We already know about the notes. And we know about the bass clef. And we know about the staff. Now, you see the numbers at the beginning, the 4-4. Four, four, that's called a time signature. I'll explain that a little more later. You see the vertical lines every so often in the, uh, across the... Those are called measure lines or bar lines. Could be called either one. Some depends on what country you're from. I'm liable to call, it, call them either one. The space in between these vertical lines 
are called measures or bars. Okay, so I could say look at the third measure or look at the third bar and you would count over to the third space. That's where those four notes that go down, depending on which way you're going here. That's the third measure. There's four measures in this line all together, and that's the third one. Now, let's look at Rain Rain. Because the notes in Rain Rain are the same as on page 28 at the bottom, except they didn't put the name of the note in there. You need to memorize the names of these notes in the, in the music, on the staff. There's all kinds of things on, you can Google it on the internet to help you learn the names of the notes. I leave that entirely up to you because uh, everybody's a little different. Just memorize them. I use a drill called play it and say it drill where I play the note and say the name of it and I just do it over and over and over piece after piece after piece until they become automatic and when I glance at the music I know the next to the top line is an F. I just know it. it in bass clef it's always an F. You don't have to worry about anything else. Huh? So we know the names of the notes in the music, sort of. Now we need to know the keys on the keyboard. And hopefully uh, prior to this in the book, they've shown you that. But I got, I'm going to go over them. In here we're using from the C to the F, those four notes, and they show them to you on page 28. But let's talk about the keyboard just a little bit. S typical keyboard, and some keyboards are short and some are long, I don't care how big it is, just typical. The keys are arranged and each one of these things is a key. I might call them a key or a note, who knows what I'm going to call them. But you have the white and you have the black. The blacks are in groups of three and two and they alternate. Two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three whatever. And it's that pattern of black notes that tell us what the white notes are. The white note in relation to where it is in this pattern of black notes. An F is at the bottom of a group of three black keys. So here's a group of three, and at the bottom, that is an F. We have a lot of Fs on the piano. F, 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 F depending on how big your keyboard is. I missed. Lots of Fs on the piano. And an E is right under it, so it's at the top of a group of two. A D is in the middle of a group of two, and a C is in the belong of a group of two. So we got these four notes. You need to memorize these names of these notes on the keyboard. Some people use stickers. I don't care if you use stickers or not, just understand stickers are temporary. You still got to memorize them. Now there's a lot of these notes on the keyboard. They just go over and over and over and over. We got these four notes all over everywhere. But let's go back to the F. The first note on page 29, that's an F. There's only one F on this keyboard that matches that note in the music. And that is the F below middle C. Well, that's wonderful. So what's middle C? Well, when you're sitting in the middle of the keyboard, the C that's basically in front of you. It's not going to be exactly in front of you, but it's in front of you. That's middle C. In this case, it's here. If you have a name on your fall board or your piano, middle C is probably in, in front of that name. It's middle C. We use it sort of as an anchor point for a lot of things. Just keep in mind. So we, we've got a lot of C's, but only one middle C, and that's here. It's not middle C because it's the middle of the piano, because it's not in the middle of the piano. I'll get to why it's middle C later. Just know it's middle C. The F we're talking about here in the music is below middle C. When we would talk below, if I go down on a keyboard, I'm going here. If I go up, I'm going here. You can hear the notes go up. Okay. Below middle C would be going here, so it would be an F is here. That's middle C, that's F. That F right there matches that note in the music. So when you see that note in the music, you're going to play that F right there. Which finger you use, we'll come to that later. Don't care right now, just play that F. 
Then the E, all of these notes are right in here, just these four notes below middle C. They're right there together. And do the play it and say it drill. Just go F, 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 F E, D, C, D, E, F, 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 and then we're doing F song. Just do this play it and say it over and over until they become automatic. When you look at a note in the music, you automatically know the name of it. You instantly know the name of it, I should say. So hopefully it's automatic, instantly. Without reading stickers or anything, it's it's you know where it is based on the black keys. Now, on top of all that, have a cup of coffee or something, whatever it is, wine, whatever works. We have to think about how long we're going to hold the notes down. We have rhythm in music. Some notes are long and some notes are short, and any combination in between going on. Okay, that's where the numbers come in at the beginning. That's four four. That's the time signature, remember? Okay, it tells us basically how long we're going to be holding these notes down. If you understand what each number means, it doesn't matter what the numbers are. No matter what the time signature is, you can figure it out. The top number tells you how far to count. We're going to count to four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or you could look at it as the top number tells you how many counts are in each measure. Remember the measure is the space between the measure lines or the bar lines? Or this, it's the bar. How many counts in a bar or how many counts in a measure? There's four of them. The bottom number tells you what you're counting because you're going to count something. It's nice to know what. And the four stands for quarter note. That's wonderful. What's a quarter note? It gets better. Let's stick around. If you're not confused, I'll get there. We'll look in the second measure. You have three notes there. The first two look alike and the other one's different. Those first two notes are quarter notes. It's a solid circle with a line. We call the line a stem. You have the head and the stem. Whatever. Those are quarter notes. So there is the same as four quarter notes in every measure. We'll look at the third measure. You see those four notes? They're all quarter notes. They're all in the measure, it works out. That, 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 that's correct, it should be. The note with the open circle with the line, to like the first note, that's called a half note. And it divides. Think of a hole. If you cut a hole in half, you get two halves. If you take a half and cut it in half, you get two fourths. Cut that, you get it two eighths, and then two sixteenths, and two thirty seconds, and it just divides. That's how it works here. We don't have any whole notes here. We have half notes and quarter notes. So a quarter note gets a beat. A half note is the same as two quarter notes, because they're two quarter notes equal a half. So a, a half note gets two counts. So you're going to hold a half note down for two counts, which is longer than one count. Do you get the idea where we're going on here? So if you count it out here, and if it confuses you to try and play the notes and count, then forget the notes, just play one note and do the rhythm. Like here on F, I could go one, two, three, four. 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 One, two. and just go through it. Steady at any speed you want to go doesn't matter and make sure you understand how long to hold each note down. Then if you want to go back in and put in which note you're playing and count at the same time. So it's I'm going to start with second finger. I'm going to be in this position, not using the thumb. I'm just going to use whichever fingers on the note. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. You see that? Okay. So you go through the whole piece carefully, play it, and count it out. You have an idea. If you're hesitating anywhere, go back and work on that spot and get rid of the hesitation. Because when you start the song, 
it has to be a steady beat until you finish. There's exceptions to that. We'll get to those later. Right now, once that beat starts at the beginning, it's steady all the way to the end. Don't get, oh, well, it's close enough I'm going on. Please don't. It's a bad habit because those close enoughs add up. And pretty soon you're lost. Get this now as we're going through here. The second line, if you look at it here, is exactly the same as the first line. So really, you're just playing the first line twice, sort of. Now, when you're first learning a piece, in order to get the rhythm right, it helps to count it out. Once you have the rhythm, once you're comfortable with it, you don't count it anymore because you know what it is. You just feel it. There's a lot of feeling going on in music. I'm going to talk a lot about feeling. Mm. So you, you don't count it, you just feel it after that. As far as how you physically push each note down, I'll leave that up to you. I want to talk more about that as we go through the book. I've thrown a lot at you right now, so that should be enough. Now, I have a thing in my videos, a section I call the play with me section. That is where I play it really slowly with a metronome. And I encourage you to play with me. We play it together. Are you playing the same note I'm playing when I play it? That's this way, after you've learned it, you can check if you're correct or not. Because if you hit a wrong note or your rhythm is off, how do you know? See, a teacher would tell you that. That's one of the reasons you really need a live teacher. However, I'll do the best I can. So we play it together slowly and check yourself and make sure you have all the right notes. Don't use the play with me to learn the piece. You learn it first and then check it with the play with me. I put the starting point of the play with me of every video in the description. So when you're ready, you can come back to the video and go right to that spot and do it. Although you really should go through and listen to the lesson again. I'll leave that up to you. But let's play it together slowly. I'm going to give us four counts. I'm going to one, two, ready, go. That's four counts. And then we're going to play it. One, two, ready, go. Two, two. Now there is a duet part for this. A duet is when you have two people making music at the same time together. Could be two singers or two piano players or two other instruments or a piano and some other instrument. It doesn't matter. Two together. So what I want to do is I want to play this duet part at the bottom of the page. And you can play what we just played. Now, I can't hear the duet, but you can, and so you do your thing, and just fuck. Some people enjoy duets, some don't. I'll leave that up to you, but I'll give us four counts. We're going to go the same speed we just did. One, two, ready, go. Two off. <laughs> 